Alright, hello there. Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. We are in our Rimac electric car again. We are uh, trying to get through this speed zone nice and fast for one of the challenges, the treasure clue in fact. Ooh, pile on the power. Ooh, that's, uh, that's an, an amount. <laughs> So we need to get six stars in an electric vehicle. At least that's my interpretation of the challenge. It says charge through the zone and then something about six stars. And that was a terrible corner. Um, so we're assuming that that's what they mean. So we're trying to get through this speed zone. There, there we go. That gives us our six stars. I'd already accidentally gotten two uh, in a different vehicle while I was just messing around in the game. So we only needed to get two stars each way on that one, which is handy. We're going to check out the treasure soon, but first, there is the question of another PR challenge that we need to do, and that is to get three stars at the launch control. Uh, daily challenge, sorry, not PR challenge. So while I'm here, that's something like, I think that would be like six stars if they gave them. And now we can head over to where the treasure is and just rack up some skill points along the way. Why not? We're in our uh, absurdly fast Rimac that has off-road suspension and tires. So after much crashing through the countryside, we find ourselves at the stadium, which has a hide-and-seek maze in it at the moment for the event that's on currently. So that's another daily challenge off our list for visiting it. And I assume we have to find the chest somewhere in here? It's probably going to be in the maze, isn't it? This might take a while, unless it's just up here. No, we're, we're going to have to find it. <laughs> so I would assume that it's in the middle somewhere. But I haven't had it come up on my mini-map yet. And normally it does so regardless of elevation. So... We might still be hunting a little while. I mean, I would have put it right up here. I, I don't know about the game devs, but I'd have put it right in the middle. Bomf. Nope, apparently it's just randomly off to the side, and one of the blue ones. So it, as you come into the stadium from the west, it's the blue tower to the right. Bit lame, really. I, it, it should really have been right in the middle. Never mind. And on to the first of our seasonal championships for the week. First of three, there's a lot of racing to do in this season. So this might be a longer episode. We'll see. <laughs> it depends how much I can just edit it down. This probably isn't going to be a desperately interesting race once we get going. Uh, the category for this one was A800 bar f Barn Finds, and well, the only car that qualifies for that stock is the Dodge Viper ACR. So we have an entire field of Dodge Vipers just racing around. I wish that I had thought to tune one up so I could be the odd one out, <laughs> but I didn't think of that. Uh, I hadn't looked at my stable of barn finds at all. Pretty much since I got them, to be honest. <laughs> They're nice cars, generally, but you get so many cars through so many other ways in this game that it's easy to just forget about them, really. I find that breaking a little bit before that corner gives you a bit of a better line through it. In my opinion. Let's see if we can get around here without losing our combo. There we go. Nice. Well, that's all of them out of the way. The top two were certainly a little bit harder to catch. I 
that's a better corner. We did have this uh, track last week as well, I feel. I, I seem to remember working my way through that corner and trying to do it properly. Alright, final lap. And it must be said that once we got ahead, certainly not a huge amount of competition it feels. I think they're all in the identical tuning as well, just the stock tuning, which is I think 796 or something. Whereas I do have mine tuned to 800, I'm not entirely sure what I changed that was different. Certainly wouldn't have been like tyres or anything advanced like that, I don't think. Hey, we actually braked properly for that corner. Go me. Up to the final corner. Break a bit there. And then accelerate through the bend. And not a best lap, but across the line, pretty happy with that. On to race number two, this time a sprint, and we are racing to the mountain. It's the point to point that finishes us just below the hill climb. Unfortunately the third race, weirdly, is not the hill climb. Uh, we then have to turn around and drive all the way to the city for the third race. Seems a bit strange. <laughs> if you're going to finish one track right at the start of another one, it feels a bit rude not to just continue on and do that one as the next one of the championship. Never mind. Maybe that would be too predictable. Come on guys, this isn't really a corner. This is the... <laughs> now coming up here I find that they always seem to take a really weird line yeah and break a lot for that first bit you do need a break for this next bend but not quite that much i feel and then this is barely a corner here a bit more of a bend here we'll break plenty before it and cut off my opponent there we go Ooh, <laughs> getting a little bit a little bit sideways there this dodge does just like to drift so you do have to be careful it gets uh, very eager sometimes all right this is the one where there's yep he's right there there's the sharp corner right at the end here now you can theoretically just crash into the barrier and go around the bend that way i have done that with some success before when i've been just trying to get ahead but we did it properly this time there we go Final race for this series, and we're tearing up the streets of Guanajuato, and honestly I cannot think of a worse combination of big American muscle car and really tight street racing through an old Mexican town with lots of walls and tunnels and twists and turns. What were they thinking? Right, let's see if we can overtake a few going around here by taking a tighter line and a bit of a wider runoff. There we go. Now let's not hit any of the walls this time like I did right off the start. Push him into a wall instead. There we go. Don't mind that. I am going in very tight on the inside of those corners, it must be said. Not the best line, but... It's because I am trying to, if I catch up to the opponent, I want to be able to get past them. If I just follow them, I'm not going to get anywhere because they're just going to block me the whole time. <laughs> Drafting doesn't really make much difference going around a corner. At this bit, I always seem to be able to get a better line than they do. So that helps. And now just the last one. I'm going to struggle to catch up to this guy now, I think. Certainly before the end of the race, because there's only just a few corners to go. We need to get on the inside up here more than anything. Uh, we might just have to come second. Mm, ooh, ooh, this is going to be tight. This is going to be tight. Ah, we got the better line out of the corner. Nice. Not that it matters, we could have come third and we still would have won. 
on to championship number two now and we're in a jaguar xfrs 2015 against a selection of other jaguars of a rating so it's a little bit more variety this time than just every single dodge viper under the sun as last time and we've got the street race down to the coast finishing off around the golf course it's weird that they don't have us actually go through the festival grounds i've always thought it kind of strange that we just turn just before we actually get to the festival i thought my steering was really bad there but realized that no my opponent was just pushing me constantly i didn't put any big wing on the back of this or anything i did a few tweaks to the handling like i usually prefer to do a little bit of performance it didn't add on a spoiler or anything it was going to bump it too far over so we might not corner quite as well as our opponents that do have those sorts of modifications but i'm hoping i do make up for it in other ways like better suspension better tires it's the main one probably now this corner here i always overshoot in these races so I'm gonna over brake instead <laughs> and come through a bit more unscathed because otherwise if you go off the corner there you go down into the gully and it's even more annoying to try and recover than normal like normally if you run off then oh no I'm off road for a little bit and I won't accelerate as well but trying to then accelerate uphill off road <laughs> in a road racing vehicle yeah that's a that's a tough ask Okay, this one I definitely braked far too early, but is another one that I'm chronic for going way over. Now, I've got to remember up here that this corner catches me out as well, and I often run off into the front yard of those houses over there. There we go, we cut on the inside of that car and across the line. Now, handily, this one they have actually organised quite well because the next race in the championship is just around the corner. What do you know? <laughs> it's nice to know that someone plans these things. So, race number two, and I'm sure the car to my right is like an XJ220, which was the Jaguar Barn Find, I thought, that I was going to try and see if I could compete in that last series so I'd be using the same car in both but it started off an S1 I thought unless maybe I'd fitted out the engine it's entirely possible I didn't dig into it too deeply crunch that guy had a bad time and we just did a really 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 bad corner there because of it but never mind <laughs> It's always the way you think you're doing something cute and manage to work your way past but if it throws you offline and you're just on the rough stuff it's really hard to recover from that in an elegant way i mean i should have just braked a bit more if i was going to come in behind my opponents then it would have been better to do it in a slightly more controlled fashion but never mind so we're actually retracing our steps a little bit for the start of this race. I actually used this course as the start of a couple of little experimental tracks that I added on. Because it didn't sit right with me that there didn't seem to be any dirt races around this area I don't think. Where there's a lot of dirt tracks. Might show that off in a different video. I do wonder sometimes if I should just turn my brightness up when I'm doing these street races, but then the sky would be just completely washed out. I appreciate their attempts at a semblance of realism for this like the bloom effect or whatever but i don't really like how dark it is for these races 
final race and we did have to travel a little bit further to get to the starting line of this one base of the mountain we'll be racing through the pass pretty standard little hill climb section to start with nice sweeping corners though uh, that was probably not the line you wanted to take there dude um, I really do wonder about the AI sometimes into the saddle now between the big mountain and the smaller hills I'm going to race down the other side and hope the traffic doesn't get in our way too badly because a lot of these are pretty fast, pretty blind corners. Blast across the flat here, top of the river. And then really sharp corners straight afterwards that always catch me out. And we're going to get caught up. And we're going to cut them off. Take that. <laughs> Love how I do a really dirty maneuver like that, like just completely go off the road, cut my opponent off so he can't get past, and then I get rewarded for clean racing. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and across the line once again. And with that, that puts us halfway through the season. We get our Mitsubishi Evo 3 1995. And that's quite convenient because the requirement for the two PR challenges this week is a Mitsubishi. Not that we're actually going to use that Mitsubishi for the PR challenges because I would have to tune it up from B rating. And uh, well, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, this is a Evo 9, I think. It's uh, a bit more recent with a bit more tuning. So hopefully, we can get the target speed through these speed zones. So I think I only need to get like 120 or something. But it's actually a pretty high target when you consider the tight corners that the speed zone has you navigate. You can cut them a decent amount, but you don't want to get too greedy. But that should do. Now that speed zone was pretty easy to do in one hit, this danger sign is probably not going to be. It's one that's in the jungle, on the coast. It took me a while to three star it in like my WiMAC or something. And now we've got to do almost my PB in the Mitsubishi. So let's see how we go. 100 meters is the target. Oh, that was close, 98. So I guess maybe we just didn't get quite long enough of a run up the first time around. So we'll try pushing it a little bit further back. Still got to navigate these tricky corners here. And then we've actually got to drive off the road at the right point. Try not to get bogged down on the water too much, but that's really hard. And now we're doing 160. Okay, there we go, 109. Much better. New PB, in fact. So that's your target. You want to be doing about 160 when you hit the jump. Well, I might not have been able to use the new Mitsubishi that I won for the PR challenges, but I can use it for the event lab. Because it requires a B-class modern or retro rally, which this is. So we're taking it for a spin. I have not done any modifications. This is completely stock. And we've got four laps around what appears to be a very short and twisty circuit and I don't know whether or not the surface is actually like a dirt surface or not it doesn't feel too bad but then this is all-wheel drive anyway it's kind of cute with the things in the water off to the left there's like a little dinosaur on a rock or something but I'm not sure what's with all the spiky features around the outside are they meant to be pyramids or just sharp rocks or what i don't know it's interesting it, it's an interesting aesthetic that's a bit of a drift around that corner not the greatest but it does this just accelerate a lot more out there the ai did a tighter corner but 
didn't seem to get as much acceleration. Ooh, that's terrible though. Oh! <laughs> okay, I didn't realize that uh, the edge of the map was right there. We could just race off into the sunset if we wanted to. That's funny. Uh, we're gonna try and break a little bit more for some of these corners now, I think. It constantly wants me to rewind at that point. I think it's because that's where the map appears to... I'm just going to drive over here. What? Why not? That's where the map appears to get confused with the checkpoints. And then there's nothing between there and the finish line. I've noticed that on a few of these sorts of races now. We just keep ending up in the grass, don't we? I am starting to wish that I'd at least given this off-road tyres just in case it mattered. Yeah, it really thinks that you've missed a checkpoint there. Now, four laps is a bit more than normal, but they were short laps. Well, not that short. Still like a minute per lap. Oh, okay. That's apparently the finish. I thought it was further along. Okay, never mind. Final seasonal championship now for the week, and it's a cross-country one. And anyone who's watched my videos before knows that I'm not a huge fan of these. We start by just driving off the road and diving down a hill. And I don't understand why that's meant to be entertaining, quite frankly. At least we're only in B-rated cars, so we're not just zooming around super fast because as soon as you step it up, and especially if you're in like the S1 range for the rally monsters and such, it's just so bananas going all over the show. The B category for off-road is kind of nice, like it's as nice as it can be. You go fast enough that you don't get too bogged down, but not so fast that it feels really bad. But it still just feels a bit I don't know, lazy, really? <laughs> it's hard to know how to do a good corner when there's no track. I guess one advantage of a faster vehicle there is you do jump over the river, but you have to go through it up here anyway. Thankfully, we're in the Ford Bronco that's got a decent amount of ground clearance. A lot of other people washing super wide there. It is hard to turn when your wheels are in the water, must be said. Now through the rocky canyon area. I, I do like this sort of setting for a race, but there is a road here, you know. We, we could have driven on the road through here. Never mind. Another silly jump down a big hill that we just bottom out. Yep, completely bottomed out. Thankfully, I can see on the map that our opponents also just stopped dead. Though this guy seems to have gotten away with it. And that's the annoying thing about the, the off-road races, is that I just completely bottomed out. I'm actually going to rewind that. I'm going to try and do that jump slightly differently. Because I really don't like how just blatantly unfair the RNG is, basically in these races it'd be interesting to know what actually happened with that other guy but we won't be able to look around i don't think oh we can i didn't even know you could look around so if we go back further yeah you can see him zooming so they went off the left hand side i went off the right hand side that's interesting i did not realize i mean it makes sense but i didn't realize you could manipulate the camera while you were rewinding that's kind of cool all right, let's try going off the left-hand side then. Seemed to work for them. So does that mean that we don't just stop dead? Ah, apparently not. Apparently you can keep going so long as you're on that part. I don't know what the rhymal reason there is to it. Probably just a slightly different incline. It's so weird. <laughs> I mean, a car would just break if you did that. Never mind. One down, two to go. Race two, and this time it is raining. I missed what season it even was. I guess it's wet. <laughs> I 
And once again, we just start off with a big jump. This time down into some priceless ruins, just to completely desecrate the archaeology, as you do. Well, the dude ahead of me has six wheels, and that always feels a little bit unfair on a surface like this. But that does make for a very long vehicle as well, so cornering, not his strong suit. Is it just a Range Rover? Because of course, he is screaming ahead. I think that this must be one of those cases where the tune and the driver tar that's chosen to represent that driver, they've just got a good one, basically. I'm not sure what base ranking the Hummer normally is, but maybe there's a lot of tuning opportunities to get it so that it's still B-class, but has a lot of power. Well, we're certainly not catching him, so hopefully we'll be able to catch up with them next race so that we can take the championship third race and the rain has just gotten heavier <laughs> they didn't even try to coordinate the tracks used in this championship we had to come basically the other side of the map to get to this one from where we were I'm sure there were a few that could have been given to us on the other side now, we don't know which car is the opponent that we need to worry about. Because I don't see a Humvee being used, which means that I've swapped cars. So hopefully we can just win and it won't matter. It's a very rare cross-country instance here. We were actually driving on the road for a bit. Not quite sure to make of that certainly don't know what my tyres want to make of that. <laughs> Alright. Moment of truth. Can we overhaul these guys? I don't think so somehow. It'll come down to the landing, really. Uh, we all bottomed out. Oh, now. Is this the guy that we need to beat? Oh, looks like the dude who won came nowhere near the top previously and the dude who came third was the guy we needed to beat so we still took the championship and if cross-country racing wasn't absurd enough well now we're in the peel again i remember using this i think for a drift zone a while ago or something well now we need to get it through a speed zone there's the speed zone down the end here but I don't think it has too high of a target, so we'll see how we go. It it doesn't really stop. Alright, well at least it means that I can't go off the track and fail the speed zone, so there's that. Let's see what happens there. Well, I doubt I got any more than just one star for that. And I'm not entirely sure what I even need for two stars, but if we just have to drive through this quickly three times... That's fine. I mean, this thing just wants to take off, apparently. <laughs> so with this, we were actually told we had to upgrade it to B-Class first, which is basically throwing every single upgrade at the car, if you can even call it a car, other than making it all-wheel drive, which to me just doesn't make any sense thematically. <laughs> and the next thing they want us to do with it is to either win a road or drag race. I'm not taking this thing anywhere near corners if I can possibly avoid it, so we're doing the drag race and hoping that we can overhaul all of the other Motley crew. That Reliant has been super hotted up it seems. Thankfully, we've got the legs on them. Right, the last thing that they want us to do with the absurd peel trident is take a photo of it, because I mean it is distinctive, I'll give it that. And we're going to combine that with the photo challenge of the week, which is to take a photo of this dude hanging around over in the corner of the ruins here. Detective Tank. I don't know, I feel Indiana Jones would make more sense. And what's a detective doing in the ruins? I don't know, who knows. But it's, it's going to look like he's taking a really close look at our peel and wondering what the hell we're doing in this thing. 
Also, he took us ages to find. I've tucked him right away in the corner. But with that out of the way, we are done for the season, and we have our Ford Mustang, which looks to be like a 50th year anniversary edition or something like that. Very nice. And then next week, we've got a Subaru WRX and a Sierra Buggy to look forward to. We've got to drive the Cuda 426 Hemi, which I think I have, but if not, maybe it'll be one of the rewards of one of the other events. Uh, no. No, apparently not. We've just got to have it. Oh, but it does look like our friend Detective Tank is going to be back at somewhere else, at Hotel Castillo, which I think, is that just our house, I think? What's he doing? He's a little bit creepy. Anyway, all that and more next week. For now, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you then.